Hello all, I'm Dr. Neema Bhatt, Senior Consultant Hematologist, Pediatric Oncologist and Bone Marrow Transplant Physician at Fortis Hospitals Banargatta and here at Helios Cancer Institute um, in Jayanagar. I have already spoken about this topic called ITP. Um, I'm just going to elaborate a little bit more about the details of ITP. So what exactly is ITP? As I've mentioned in one of my earlier videos, it is immune thrombocytopenic purpura, which means your immune system sort of goes on an overdrive and starts to attack these blood cells that are called platelets. So platelets are responsible for preventing bleeding and to help heal our wounds and make scams. And when somebody has ITP, these platelet counts drop to much lower levels than normal and that can cause issues. So what are normal platelet counts? Usually anything between 1 to 1.5 lakhs and above all the way until 4 lakhs is the normal platelet count for a healthy individual. When platelet counts drop to less than 1 lakh, especially to less than 50,000, it can cause significant problems, especially bleeding symptoms, uh, bleeding from the nose, bleeding in the gums, especially when you brush your teeth. Uh, for women, it can cause heavy menstruation. It can cause bleeding in urine, sometimes bleeding in the intestine, causing blood on the stools. It can also cause severe bleeding that can be life-threatening, like bleeding inside the skull or brain, as well as severe bleeding inside the abdomen or stomach. So these are the symptoms that we usually uh, as hematologists recommend for people to watch out, um, to be wary about low platelet counts and bleeding symptoms. How is di ITP diagnosed? So um, the best thing to do is to get a CBC done. So when you notice any of these symptoms, get a complete blood count done. Complete blood count is nothing but hemoglobin, WBC counts and platelets. So we look at all the components of, um, of blood and uh, we see if the platelet counts are down, you need to consult with a hematologist. ITP is more of a diagnosis of exclusion. What does that mean? So low platelet counts can happen because of various reasons. It can happen because of an infection like dengue, chikungunya or some other viral infection. It can happen because of medications, certain drugs. It can happen because of other infections, sometimes like hepatitis B, hepatitis C or various other infections. Sometimes exposure to chemicals can also cause low platelet counts. So when these other causes have been ruled out, so to make sure that this is not low platelet count is not due to other conditions, we have to carry out a certain number of blood tests, mostly blood tests. And when all those things have been ruled out, that is when we diagnose the patient as having ITP or immune thrombocytopenic purpura. In rare occasions, we may also have to do a test called bone marrow aspiration biopsy, which is where we take a sample from the from inside the bone, the space called bone marrow where blood is produced and we send it for testing to see there is nothing else abnormal that is causing the low platelet count. It is done usually where other counts are also down. So someone has low platelet counts but also has low hemoglobin or also has low WBC or some other symptoms are worrisome for a condition other than ITP. That is when we do bone marrow aspiration biopsy. Once the patient is diagnosed with ITP, what is the next step? So if the platelet counts are just borderline low, say it's above 50,000 but still less than 1 lakh, so still lesser than the normal range, Usually, we don't recommend any treatment, observation and frequent monitoring. So, repeated uh, you know, blood checks to see where the platelet counts are at as long as the patient is not having any severe bleeding. That is the only recommended treatment once the diagnosis of ITP has been made. However, if the platelet counts are less than 50,000 or if the patient is having symptoms of bleeding, as I mentioned, if there are you know, bleeding in different um, parts of the body or if you're getting frequent bruises or petechiae in different parts of the body, uh, then it has to be treated. So the first line of treatment is usually what we call steroids or um, you know, glucocorticoids. So they're nothing but medications that can help reduce the inflammation or calm down the immune system. So this plated destruction that is happening you know, constantly can come down and plated counts can improve. Usually we start with a slightly higher dose of steroids and we give it for a short period of time and regularly monitor plated counts and slowly reduce the dose of steroids. Other than steroids, uh, other lines of management are also available. If we feel that the patient is bleeding a lot and we or is at risk for bleeding or the platelet count is very low and we need to improve the counts very fast, then we give a medicine called IVIG. So they are nothing but pooled antibodies or pooled proteins that are you know, obtained from different people. And we by giving that, we reduce the destruction of platelets. There is nowadays also an injection called romiplostim that improves the production of platelets and that's how we sort of beat the immune system and you know, increase the production beyond the rate of destruction. So that can also help in improving the platelet counts. Uh, apart from this, there are some other medications like rituximab. Um, there is another tablet called Revelade, which is sort of an equivalent of romiplostim, but in the uh, tablet form, it's called l -trombopac. 
um, other medications called azathioprine. So these are all medications that work on different pathways but still help us to improve the platelet counts. When there is no response for an ITP patient to various medical um, you know, possibilities or various medical lines of treatment, the last resort we uh, usually recommend is splenectomy. So we have an organ in our inside the stomach that is called spleen, um, which usually helps sort of purify the blood. And in ITP, these, the spleen is sort of overactive and destroys platelets very frequently or very fast. So we'll have to remove the spleen so that the destruction of platelets comes down drastically and platelet counts can be normalized. Uh, of course, there's a lot of precautions that have to be taken before splenectomy and your hematologist or physician will guide you accordingly. If you have any further questions about ITP, bleeding disorders, low counts, kindly feel free to reach out to me. I'm Dr. Neema Bhatt, hematologist. Thank you.